A very good morning to all of you. <clears throat> Today we are going to discuss torque ripple in induction motor drives. I will write the title of today's topic. Torque ripple in induction motor drives. So the topic of today's discussion is torque ripple in induction motor drives. <clears throat> Over the last three lectures we have been discussing uh, stator flux ripple and we have been studying the influence of different types of PWM switching sequences on stator flux ripple and hence current ripple in the windings of an induction motor. We have learned that there are some PWM switching sequences uh, which result in um, lower uh, uh, state of flux ripple over a range of spatial angle alpha and they result in uh, higher state of flux ripple over some other range of alpha. Similarly, there are some other uh, PWM switching sequences which result in lower ripple and higher ripple in uh, you know, state of flux or lower state of flux ripple and higher state of flux ripple for different ranges of alpha. Based on that observation, we found that, you know, um, uh, uh, 60 degree clamp PWM technique uh, has the highest, uh, you know, uh, uh, total harmonic distortion or highest current ripple. Whereas 30 degree clamp PWM gives lowest uh, THD of the current, okay. In a similar way, we also found that in the advanced bus clamping PWM techniques, uh, advanced bus clamping based 60 degree clamp PWM gives highest ripple and advanced bus clamping based 30 degree clamp PWM gives lowest ripple. These were some of the observations which we have been making over the last three lectures. We have been primarily discussing the influence of PWM switching sequences on you know, state of flux ripple and hence current ripple and accordingly we try to design various PWM uh, techniques or switching sequences, selecting switching sequences in such a way that we get lowest, you know, state of flux ripple. Now, we, we also have to discuss the influence of these PWM switching sequences on another very important parameter which is torque ripple. You know, uh, if uh, your induction motor is fed by uh, fed from purely sinusoidal source, sinusoidal voltage, then there is no question of any torque pulsation or torque ripple in induction motor. It produces uniform torque. We already know that. So, if you draw the fundamental equivalent circuit model of an induction motor, I will write here fundamental model of induction motor. I will draw on per phase basis it looks like this this is stator side and this is rotor side for example the fundamental applied voltage is v1 this is stator winding resistance stator winding inductance this is magnetizing inductance this is rotor side inductance and this is rr by s okay uh, at fundamental frequency, I mean, uh, our um, revolving magnetic field is rotating at synchronous speed and a rotor is rotating at a speed very close to synchronous speed. So in that case, our slip is very, very small. It is like 0 0.002 or 0 0.003, which makes this term very large. So therefore, this RR by S cannot be neglected. neglected okay. Now we know, uh, say for example, if uh, the nature of voltage applied across induction motor winding is something like this, say it is a square wave, this is 0 pi 2 pi, say for example it is a square wave, okay, this is voltage, it has fundamental component, let us call this fundamental component as V over, and in addition to fundamental component, it also impresses various harmonics like there will be fifth harmonic component of voltage, there will be seventh harmonic component of voltage, eleventh harmonic component of voltage, thirteenth harmonic component of voltage and so on. So therefore there are 
um, fundamental component of voltage when applied across induction motor winding gives rise to fundamental equivalent circuit model of induction motor which looks like this. V1 means fundamental component of voltage. RS is the stator resistance, LS is the stator uh, leakage inductance. LR is the rotor leakage inductance, RR by S is the rotor resistance and LM is the uh, magnetizing inductance and for example IS1 is the fundamental component of current flowing in the stator winding. Okay, so this is fundamental model of induction motor. Now we know that in addition to fundamental component of voltage V1 which is applied across induction motor winding, there are many harmonics. There is fifth harmonic component of voltage, seventh harmonic component of voltage. For example, from the harmonic spectrum, you already know, for example, if this is harmonic order H and this is, you know, amplitude of the voltage VH. This is amplitude. Fundamental component of, you know, when H equal to one, you know, um, fundamental frequency. For fundamental frequency for a harmonic order of one, full 100% voltage will get applied across the <coughs> induction motor winding which is fundamental component of voltage V1. Then we will have a strong fifth harmonic component of voltage whose amplitude is 1 by 5. We have strong seventh harmonic component of voltage whose amplitude is 1 by 7. Then we have eleventh harmonic component of voltage. We have thirteenth harmonic component of voltage and so on. This is true, this is uh, you can see from the harmonic spectrum. Fundamental component of voltage gives rise to torque, development of torque and if there was, there were no harmonics in the voltage then this torque would have had no ripples, it would have been pulsation free, it would have been uniform torque. But unfortunately in addition to fundamental component of voltage we are impressing harmonic components also across the motor winding, okay. Like fifth harmonic voltage, <coughs> seventh harmonic component of voltage and other higher order, order component or components of voltage also get impressed across induction motor winding and they, and they result in the flow of you know harmonic currents in the induction motor winding and those harmonic currents are responsible for developing harmonic torques and those harmonic torques in turn give rise to harmonic pulsations on tor or torque ripples. Let us see <coughs> how uh, this torque ripple or torque pulsation is produced. So when harmonic component of voltages are applied across induction motor, <coughs> the induction motor model gets modified. So I will now draw harmonic model of induction motor. <coughs> harmonic model of induction motor. So harmonic model of induction motor looks like this. We have already discussed it in one of the previous classes in details. So harmonic voltage applied across the induction motor winding is Vn. This is stator winding inductance Ls. This is rotor winding inductance Lr. And harmonic component of current Ln is flowing. The resistance is Rr by S and Rs. They are, they are extremely small as compared to the reactances at harmonic voltages. Okay. And as far as magnetizing inductance is concerned, it is very, very large as compared to Ls and Lr. So this can also be ignored. So therefore our you know simplified harmonic model of induction motor looks like this as far as harmonic current i n is concerned it is given by v n by n where n is the order of harmonic for example <coughs> excuse me fifth harmonic component of current will be v five fifth, fifth harmonic component of voltage divided by five seventh harmonic component of current will be v seven by seven and so on okay so this is the harmonic model of induction motor now you must remember that because of these harmonic currents due to harmonic voltages, torque pulsations or torque ripples are produced in the induction motor. Let us try to analyze those torque pulsations or torque ripples. Let us first of all again consider fundamental voltage. So I will write here. Uh, so before I write fundamental voltage, uh, just few moments back I told you that I n is equal to you know it is. Vn by n omega times Ls plus Lr. From the harmonic model, you can see the harmonic component of current is Vn divided by n omega times Ls plus Lr, <coughs> where n is the order of harmonic. And this can also be written as Vn by n omega L, where L is equal to Ls plus Lr. From this, we can say that In is <coughs> proportional to Vn by n. 
just few moments back i had written in is equal to vn by n it is not actually in equal to vn by n it is you please make corrections it is in proportional to vn by n as per this equation so that's why i told you that for fifth harmonic component of voltage there will be fifth harmonic component of current which will be pro uh, proportional to v5 by 5 seventh harmonic component of current will be proportional to v7 by 7 and so now <clears throat> let us <clears throat> try to write some mathematical equations for three phase fundamental voltages i will write here three phase fundamental <clears throat> voltages okay we can write three phase fundamental voltages as like this vrn1 equal to vm sin omega t then vyn1 equal to vm sin of omega t minus 120 degrees and <clears throat> vbn1 equal to vm sin of omega t plus 120 degrees for example this is our induction motor winding this is the neutral of the winding this induction motor is fed from the inverter so this is three phase voltage source inverter okay so this voltage source inverter impresses three phase voltages for example this voltage will be vrn line to neutral voltage vrn similarly we will have vyn we will have vbn well, as far as these voltages are concerned, we know that these voltages comprise of fundamental components and harmonic components. I am writing three phase fundamental component volt, fundamental voltages. So, so line to neutral voltage or phase voltage VR1, VRN1, one means fundamental component is equal to Vm sin omega t. Y phase fundamental component of phase voltage VYN1 is equal to Vm sin of omega t minus 120 degrees and B phase fundamental component of uh, phase voltage that is vb and 1 is equal to vm sine of omega t plus 120 degrees so this we already know now these phase to neutral voltages can also be written as for example vrn1 can be written as ir1 into rs plus d psi r1 by dt I mean, if you draw the equivalent circuit of induction motor, it has uh, resistance. There will be some voltage drop across the induction motor winding resistance, which will be given by fundamental component of current flowing in the winding multiplied by stator resistance. So this is the voltage drop plus rate of change of flux linkage. So psi is flux linkage, d psi r1 by dt. Okay. Generally, it has been seen that this stator resistance is very, very small. It's negligibly small. So we can write that this Vrn1 is very nearly equal to d psi r1 by dt. Okay. In a similar way, Vrn1 is equal to I, sorry, it is uh, Vyn1 is equal to Iy1 into Rs plus d psi y1 by dt so which is very nearly equal to d psi y1 by dt rate of change of flux linkage in a similar way phase voltage vb and one can also be written as ib1 into rs plus d psi v1 by dt and this can be written as nearly equal to d psi b1 by dt okay so therefore, these uh, voltages, phase voltages, VRN1, VYN1, and BBN1, fundamental component of phase voltages, they will produce a rotating or revolving magnetic field in induction motor. Okay, so it will be something like this. This is our R phase. This is Y phase, and this is B phase. So these three phase voltages, VRN1, VY. N1 and VBN1, which are given by these equations, or you can write them in terms of flux linkages like this, they give rise to a strong revolving magnetic field, which is revolving in counterclockwise direction at a speed omega, which is given by frequency of the voltage, and 
let us call this as psi1. Psi1 is the fundamental component of the revolving flux linkage or revolving magnetic field. Okay. Now, <coughs> in space vector domain, okay, space vector domain means alpha beta domain. We have uh, already noted that in alpha beta domain, as far as this V alpha is concerned, that is given by 3 by 2 V R N. We already know it when we were transforming from A, B, C to alpha beta. We wrote V alpha and V beta equations and V alpha equation was, uh, you know, given as 3 by 2 V R N, which is equal to 3 by 2. What is V R N? V R N is V M sine omega T. So that means V alpha or you know uh, component of voltage along alpha axis or V alpha that is directly proportional to V 3 by 2 V m. So therefore space vector V1 can be written as 3 by 2 V m. V1 can be written as 3 by 2 V m. Okay. So um, as far as this flux linkage for psi 1 is concerned it is given by this equation. It is given by fundamental component of voltage divided by speed or at which the magnetic field or divided by the frequency of the supply omega okay this is the equation for calculating the flux linkage so flux linkage psi one, fundamental component of flux linkage psi one is equal to v1 by omega where v1 is 3 by 2 vm okay fine so that is about when three phase fundamental voltages vr n1 v by n1 and vb n1 are applied across induction motor windings they result in the production of a revolving magnetic field psi 1 whose amplitude is given by v1 by omega where v1 is equal to 3 by 2 vm fine now in addition to three phase fundamental voltages there are harmonic voltages also present let us see what these harmonic voltages give rise to now first of all i will write three phase fifth harmonic voltages which are the most predominant harmonics fifth harmonic is the most predominant harmonic in inverter output voltage three phase fifth harmonic voltages so i can write line to neutral voltage or phase voltage five that is fifth harmonic component of phase voltage vrn vrn five that is given by vm sine phi of omega t okay because the fifth harmonic component of voltage will result in the uh, flow of fifth harmonic component of current and fifth harmonic component of current will have a frequency of five times the fundamental frequency okay so this can be written as v5 sine 5 omega t similarly vyn5 is equal to v5 sine 5 of omega t minus 120 degrees which can also be written as v5 sine 5 omega t minus 5 into 120 is 600 degrees what does 600 degrees means from this this 600 degrees you will subtract from 720 degrees because the voltage these uh, voltages have a periodicity of 360 degrees but here i am getting 600 degrees so 720 minus 600 degrees you will be v by n 5 equal to v5 sine of Phi omega t what is 720 minus 600 degrees it's plus 120 degrees so in other words minus 60 degrees is also same as plus 120 degrees it means same thing in a similar way fifth harmonic phase b voltage vb and phi is equal to v5 sine phi of omega t plus 120 degrees which is equal to v5 sine of 5 omega t plus 5 into 120 is 600 degrees here you have to subtract it from 720 degrees okay so therefore fifth harmonic component of phase b voltage is equal to v5 sine of 5 omega t so 600 minus 720 is minus 120 degrees so now something very interesting has come this is v r n 5 this is vbn sorry this is vyn5 and this is vbn5 as compared to fundamental component of voltage like vrn1 which was given by vm sin omega t 
Vyn1 which was given by Vm sin of omega t minus 120 degrees and Vbn1 which was given by Vm sin of omega t plus 120 degrees. What, what do these fifth harmonic voltages tell us? They tell us that the phase sequences reverse to the phase sequence of fundamental voltages. Here Vrn1 is Vm sin omega t. Here Vrn5 is V5 sin phi omega t. No problem. Fundamental component of phase y voltage is Vm sin of omega t minus 120 degrees whereas fifth harmonic component of phase y voltage is V5 sin of phi omega t plus 120 degrees. Here it is minus 120 degrees. Here is, it is plus 120 degrees. Similarly, fundamental component of phase B voltage is Vm sin of omega t plus 120 degrees, whereas fifth harmonic component of uh, phase voltage Vbn is equal to V5 sin of phi omega t minus 120 degrees. Here it is plus 120 degrees, here it is minus 120 degrees. So therefore, the fifth harmonic component of voltages will have a phase, uh, an opposite uh, phase sequence. So reverse phase sequence reverse phase sequence which is equivalent to as if you have interchanged two windings of the induction motor okay by interchanging any two windings of an induction motor phase sequence gets reversed so here fifth harmonic component of voltages have a reverse phase sequence as compared to fundamental component of voltages hence fifth harmonic component of voltages will result in you know uh, uh, production of a revolving magnetic field because this fifth harmonic component of voltages will result in flow of fifth harmonic component of currents and they will result since the phase sequence is result uh, the phase sequence is reverse they will result in the production of harmonic fifth harmonic revolving magnetic field which will not be revolving in the same direction as fundamental that means which will not be rotating in a counterclockwise direction but it will be rotating in anticlockwise direction at a speed of phi omega because of reverse phase sequence okay i will come to that in a minute's time so as far as these fifth harmonic component of voltages are concerned i can write these fifth harmonic component of voltages again as we are in five is equal to uh, we are in five is equal to <clears throat> d psi r phi by dt similarly i mean uh, vrn5 is equal to d it's actually uh, i r phi into rs plus d psi r phi by dt now as far as fifth harmonic component of current is concerned it is very weak as compared to fundamental component of current and since stator resistance is already very small so this voltage drop is almost equal to zero it is nearly equal to zero so therefore we are not considering this voltage drop so therefore it will be d psi uh, uh, rate of change of fifth harmonic flux linkage d psi r phi by dt that's what i have written here similarly v y n phi will be very nearly equal to d psi by phi by dt and Vb and 5 will be very nearly equal to d psi b 5 by dt. Okay. So therefore, this is my induction motor winding. This is R, Y, B. Fundamental component of voltages result in the creation of revolving magnetic field psi which is revolving in counterclockwise direction at a speed omega fifth harmonic component of voltages will result in production of a weak fifth harmonic you know um, uh, rotating magnetic field psi phi which will not be rotating in same direction as fundamental rotating magnetic field but it will be rotating in opposite direction because of phase reverse phase sequence so therefore this psi 5 is equal to v5 by 5 omega because just few moments back we have seen this is psi 1 psi 1 is equal to v1 by omega okay so psi 5 will be v5 by 5 omega and as far as fifth harmonic component of current is concerned that will be v5 by 
phi omega l, where l is ls plus lr. We know this. Now, since fundamental, the revolving magnetic field produced by fundamental voltages revolves in counterclockwise direction at a speed of omega, and the revolving magnetic field produced by fifth harmonic component of voltages revolves in opposite direction, that means in clockwise direction at a speed of phi omega. The speed is phi omega. So therefore, what is the relative speed between fundamental uh, revolving field and fifth harmonic uh, revolving magnetic field? So their relative speed is 6 omega. Because fundamental MMF is revolving at omega speed in counterclockwise direction and psi 5 is rotating at a speed of phi omega in, in, in clockwise direction. So the relative speed between the two mag revolving magnetic fields is 6 omega. Fine. So this was about fifth harmonic voltages and what type of magnetic field they produce. So let us quickly now discuss three phase seventh harmonic voltage. Three phase seventh harmonic voltages. Now this three phase seventh harmonic voltages will be like this. V R N seven is equal to V seven sine 7 of omega t fine so that is equal to v7 sine of 7 omega t similarly vyn7 will be equal to v7 sine 7 of omega t <coughs> minus 120 degrees that is equal to v7 sine of 7 omega t minus 7 into 120 is 840 degrees so this is 840 degrees so you have to uh, this is minus 840 degrees you have to subtract it from 720 degrees okay so that will give us vyn7 equal to v7 sine of 7 omega t minus 120 degrees 720 minus 840 is minus 120 degrees so note it down what about fifth harmonic phase voltage VBN, VBN, sorry, seventh harmonic phase voltage VBN, VBN7, that is equal to V7 sine 7 of omega t plus 120 degrees, which is equal to V7 sine of 7 omega t plus 840 degrees. So here also you have to subtract it from 720 degrees, okay, minus 720 degrees. So therefore VBN7 will be equal to V7 sine of 7 omega t plus 120 degrees. So interestingly you can see 7th harmonic voltages have same phase sequence as fundamental component of voltages. Because your fundamental component of phase or voltage is Vm sine omega t. Here it is Vr n7 is Vm V7 sine 7 omega t. Fine. Vyn fundamental is V m sine omega t minus 120 degrees and v by n 7 is v 7 sine 7 omega t this is also minus 120 degrees similarly v b n fundamental is v m sine of omega t plus 120 degrees and v b n 7 is v 7 sine of 7 omega t plus 120 degrees so it has same phase sequence as fundamental voltages same phase sequence as fundamental so therefore this will also result in a revolving magnetic field which will be revolving in the same direction as fundamental uh, uh, this uh, magnetic field okay because the phase sequence is same okay <clears throat> i will come to that but before that i can write this seventh harmonic component of phase voltages v sorry v r n 7 proportional to d psi 7 by d psi r 7 by dt. Similarly, v y n 7 is equal to d psi y 7 by dt. And v b n 7 is equal to d psi b 7 by dt. So therefore, the seventh harmonic component of voltage will result in another revolving magnetic field. Let me show you the revolving magnetic field. So this is phase R, this is phase Y, and this is phase B of induction motor. Fundamental component of voltage results in, excuse me, fundamental component of voltage results in 
production of fundamental MMF or fundamental revolving magnetic field which is revolving in counterclockwise direction at omega. Just few moments back we have seen that seventh or fifth harmonic component of voltage results in production of uh, psi 5 that's the revolving magnetic field which is revolving at a speed 5 omega opposite to fundamental mag magnetic field and now we have seen seventh harmonic component of voltage also results in a revolving magnetic field let us call that psi 7 which is revolving in the same direction as uh, at 7 omega as fundamental magnetic field because phase you can say same okay so therefore what is the, uh, the relative speed relative speed between fundamental revolving magnetic field and seventh harmonic revolving magnetic field fundamental revolving magnetic field is rotating in counterclockwise direction at a speed of omega and uh, revolving magnetic field because of seventh harmonic component of currents also produce a revolving magnetic field which is rotating in the same direction as fundamental magnetic field but at a speed of 7 omega so what is the relative speed between the two which is 7 omega minus m omega that is also 6 omega the relative speed between psi 1 and psi 5 just few moments back we found that is also 6 omega and incidentally the relative speed between psi 7 and psi 1 is also 6 omega now what is this psi 7 psi 7 is equal to v7 by 7 omega and seventh harmonic component of current is given by V7 by 7 omega L, where L is equal to LS plus LR. In a similar way, if you impress three phase after seventh harmonic, what is the next harmonic which will get impressed across induction motor winding? It's 11th harmonic. So if you consider three phase, 11th harmonic voltages after this. Three phase, 11th harmonic voltages will result in a revolving magnetic field psi 11 which will be rotating opposite to fundamental magnetic field at 11 omega similarly if you consider 13th harmonic voltages 13th harmonic voltages will result in revolving magnetic field psi 13 which will be revolving at a speed 13 omega in the same direction at, as fundamental magnetic field so therefore what is the relative speed in this case Relative speed between fundamental magnetic field and 11th harmonic magnetic field is 11 omega minus omega that is 10 omega. Sorry, 11 omega plus, because they are opposite, omega is in this direction, 11 omega is in this direction, 11 omega plus omega that is 12 omega. Similarly, relative speed between 11th between 13th harmonic magnetic field and fundamental magnetic field is 13th omega, 13 omega minus omega because they are both revolving in the same direction that is also 12 omega fine so in general we can say that the harmonic voltages of this order are right here harmonic voltages of the order 6k minus 1 where k is an integer like 1, 2, 3 and so on produce harmonic magnetic fields with a reverse phase sequence reverse phase sequence whereas other harmonic voltages other harmonic voltages produce uh, produce ma magnetic fields with the reverse phase sequence instead of writing reverse phase sequence with the reverse with uh, produce harmonic magnetic fields they revolving opposite to fundamental field fundamental magnetic field whereas other harmonic voltages produce revolving fields in same direction as fundamental field 
fundamental revolving magnetic field. That means if you take 6k minus 1, put k equal to 1, so 6 minus 1 is 5, put k equal to 2, 6 to 12 minus 1 is 11, put k equal to 3, 17, and so on. That means 5th harmonic voltage, 11th harmonic voltage, 7th harmonic voltage, and so on. They have opposite phase sequence as compared to fundamental component of voltage. So therefore, they will produce revolving magnetic fields, which will be revolving opposite to the fundamental magnetic field. Whereas other harmonics like 7th harmonic component of voltage, 13th harmonic component of voltage, 19th harmonic component of voltage and so on, they will produce, they have the same phase sequence as fundamental voltage. And so therefore, they will create revolving harmonic magnetic fields, which will revolve in the same direction as fundamental magnetic field. So therefore, we can, uh, so this is the general um, observation. <clears throat> After this, let us try to understand frequencies of stator and rotor magnetic fields. Frequencies of stator and rotor magnetic fields. Now we already know that our induction motor is fed with a voltage which is not purely sinusoidal voltage. So stator applied voltage and currents they have the fundamental component and harmonics. So we will write first point here stator applied voltages and winding currents that means stator winding currents are fundamental voltage, fundamental voltage and fundamental current, then fifth harmonic component of voltage and fifth harmonic component of current, seventh harmonic component of voltage which will result in flow of seventh harmonic component of current, similarly eleventh harmonic, thirteenth harmonic and so on. So these are various harmonics in addition to fundamental component of voltage. We have various harmonic voltages which are impressed across induction motor windings from the inverter. Okay. If you are using a square wave inverter, you are not using if you are not using PWM technique. So in addition to fundamental voltage, there will be several harmonic voltages impressed across induction motor windings, which will result in fundamental flow of fundamental component of current and flow of various harmonic component of currents in the induction motor winding. Fine. Now, after that I will write that stator magnetic fields revolve at speeds or at frequencies omega, minus 5 omega, 7 omega, minus 11 omega, 13 omega and so on. That means for example if fundamental component of voltage is taken that will result in the flow of fundamental component of current and that will produce a strong fundamental revolving magnetic field and that revolving magnetic field will be rotating in counterclockwise direction at a speed of omega okay which is also called synchronous speed. Now when fifth harmonic component of voltage is also impressed across induction motor winding that will result in the flow of fifth harmonic currents and fifth harmonic currents, uh, these fifth harmonic voltage is just few moments back. We have seen their phase sequences opposite to the phase sequence of fundamental voltages. So therefore, because of these, the fifth harmonic currents will produce fifth harmonic revolving magnetic fields, which will be revolving in a direction opposite to the direction of fundamental field and at a speed of 5 omega. So the speed will be minus 5 omega. Minus means the this fifth harmonic revolving magnetic field is revolving at a speed uh, in the direction opposite to the direction of fundamental magnetic field. That means if fundamental magnetic field is revolving in counterclockwise direction, this will be revolving in anticlockwise direction or uh, clockwise. If fundamental revolving magnetic field is rotating in counterclockwise direction, the fifth harmonic revolving magnetic field will be revolving uh, in clockwise direction, just opposite. That is what minus 5 omega means. We have seen that seventh uh, harmonic component of voltage has same phase, phase sequence as fundamental voltage. So therefore seventh harmonic currents will produce another revolving magnetic field 
which will revolve in the same direction as fundamental magnetic field. A fundamental magnetic field is revolving in counterclockwise direction. Seventh harmonic magnetic field will also revolve in counterclockwise direction. So it is plus 7 omega. Then minus 11 omega because 11th harmonic voltages have again reverse phase you can 13 omega and so on. So these are the uh, various magnetic fields and speeds at which these magnetic fields are produced. Fine. Now Um, next point is I will write stator magnetic fields with respect to rotor uh, revolve at speeds at which speeds they revolve they revolve at speeds omega minus omega r then I will, I will explain it just uh, wait for a moment then minus 5 omega minus omega r then 7 omega minus omega r then minus sorry minus 11 omega minus omega r then 13 omega minus omega r and so on see if our uh, you take the fundamental revolved magnetic field this is the fundamental revolved magnetic field it is rotating at a speed of omega Rotor is rotating at a speed of, speed of omega r, which is very close to synchronous speed because slip is just two to three percent. Induction motor rotor is rotating very at a speed very close to omega, okay, slightly less than omega. So therefore, what is the relative speed between stator rotating magnetic field and rotor speed? That means with respect to rota rotor, at what speed is our uh, rotating magnetic field revolving. It is revolving at a speed of omega minus omega r. That, that's what I have written. So therefore fundamental revolving magnetic field with respect to rotor is rotating at a speed of omega minus omega r. Then take the fifth harmonic revolving magnetic field. Fifth harmonic revolving magnetic field is revolving in opposite direction at a speed of minus 5 omega but rotor is rotating in this direction omega r. So therefore with respect to rotor what is the speed of this fifth harmonic magnetic field? It is minus 5 omega minus omega r. Similarly, seventh harmonic magnetic field is revolving with respect to rotor at a speed of 7 omega minus omega. Similarly, minus 11 omega minus omega, 13 omega minus omega r and so on. So this is the speeds of stator magnetic fields with respect to rotor. Now, when uh, these stator magnetic fields are uh, rotating uh, they are cutting the you know um, they are cutting the windings of the rotor and they result in induced currents in the rotor and induced currents in the rotor are at slip frequency okay so the currents which are induced in the rotor windings they produce their own magnetic fields okay these are the magnetic fields produced in this by the stator winding and when fundamental component of current and harmonic component of currents flow in the rotor windings also they also produce their own uh, revolving magnetic fields which are called uh, rotor magnetic fields so i will write here rotor magnetic fields revolve with respect to rotor at same speeds that's omega minus omega r then minus 5 omega minus omega r then 7 omega minus omega r then minus 11 omega minus omega r then 13 omega minus omega r and so on try to understand this is your rotor this is the rotor rotor is rotating at a speed of omega r say in counterclockwise direction okay now because of flow of current in the rotor winding say fundamental component of current consider fundamental component of current which is flowing in the rotor winding that will produce a revolving magnetic field omega which is revolving in counterclockwise direction so therefore this is the rotor magnetic field synchronous magnetic field i mean rotor magnetic field revolving at synchronous speed and with respect to rotor, what is its speed? This rotor magnetic field is revolving at a speed of omega. 
but rotor itself is rotating at a speed of omega r so what is the relative speed between the two that means uh, with respect to rotor the rotor magnetic field rotor fundamental magnetic field is rotating at a speed of omega minus omega r that's what i have written similarly your rotor is rotating at a speed of omega r and fifth harmonic component of current when it is flowing in the rotor winding that results in fifth harmonic revolving magnetic field which is rotating in opposite direction at a speed of minus phi omega so therefore with respect to rotor what is the speed of this fifth harmonic revolving magnetic field it's minus phi omega minus omega r similarly seventh harmonic magnetic field is revolving with respect to rotor at a speed of 7 omega minus omega r similarly we will have a minus 11 omega minus omega r then 13 omega minus omega r and so on so this is the uh, speeds at which uh, rotor magnetic fields are rotating with respect to rotor. So finally I will write for rotor magnetic fields revolve with respect to stator, not with respect to rotor but with respect to stator at speeds. Try to understand this. This is your rotor. Rotor is rotating at a speed of omega r. Say this is the fundamental uh, rotor magnetic field which is rotating in the same direction at a speed of omega. With respect to rotor, the fundamental rotating magnetic field produced by rotor currents is rotating with respect to rotor at a speed of omega minus omega r. And with respect to stator, stator is a stationary item. With respect to stator, what is the speed of this fundamental rotor magnetic field? It is omega plus omega r because rotor itself is rotating at a speed of omega r. Okay. So it is omega plus omega r. Sorry, it is omega. It is omega. It is, see, with respect to rotor, the speed is omega minus omega r. But rotor itself is rotating at a speed of omega r. So make, make it plus omega r. Omega r, omega r goes. That means this fundamental rot uh, revolving magnetic field produced by rotor currents with respect to rotor it is revolving at a speed of omega minus omega r but since rotor itself is rotating at a speed of omega r so with respect to stator the speed is omega minus omega r plus omega r that is omega so therefore rotor magnetic fields revolve with respect to stator at speeds of omega minus 5 omega 7 omega minus 11 omega 13 omega and so on. This is very interesting. We are just seeing the relative speeds. We started with stator magnetic fields and we found that stator magnetic fields, they also rotate at the same speeds. They uh, revolve at speeds. This was the first point we saw. Omega minus 5 omega, 7 omega, minus 11 omega, 13 omega and so on. We have seen it. This was the first point. And we have just now proved that rotor magnetic fields also rotate at the same speeds as stator magnetic fields. So therefore there is interaction between stator magnetic fields and rotor magnetic fields. And this interaction between stator revolving magnetic fields and rotor revolving magnetic fields gives rise to torque. What is torque due to? We know torque is because of the interaction between stator and rotor magnetic fields. Let us take fundamental component of voltage. When fundamental component of voltage gets applied across induction motor windings, that results in the flow of fundamental component of current. So that results in the uh, uh, production of revolved magnetic field, fundamental revolved magnetic field psi1, which is rotating at a speed of omega in anticlockwise direction. This is on the stator side. On rotor side, let us try to find now on rotor side on rotor side what is the speed of this magnetic field with respect to rotor so i will write here so let me write the sequence of events like this stator i can start from here i will write here stator fundamental magnetic field revolves at a speed of omega in space 
or in air gap. Space means air gap. Then fundamental component of voltage is applied across induction motor winding. It results in the flow of fundamental current and that results in the production of stator magnetic field psi1 which is rotating in counterclockwise direction at synchronous speed say omega. Okay. So with respect to rotor, but we know that rotor is also rotating in the same direction at a speed of omega r. What is the speed of stator magnetic field? In air gap its speed is omega. Fine. With respect to rotor, what is its speed? With respect to rotor, it revolves at a speed of omega minus omega r. We have seen it just few moments back. Omega minus omega r. Okay. Now, since there are currents in the rotor also, rotor windings, though they will also result in revolved magnetic field. This is the revolved magnetic field created by stator currents. There will be another revolved magnetic field which will be created by rotor currents. So I will write here rotor fundamental magnetic field that also rotates at a speed of omega. So uh, rotor fundamental magnetic field revolves with respect to rotor. With respect to rotor, it revolves at a speed equal to omega minus omega r because rotor magnetic field rotates at a speed of omega in air gap and so rotor is itself rotating at a speed of omega r. So with respect to rotor, its speed is omega minus omega r. But the speed of rotor magnetic field with respect to stator is omega minus omega r plus omega r because rotor itself is rotating at a speed of omega r. So I will write here with respect to stator, rotor field or rotor magnetic field revolves at a speed of omega minus omega r. It has a speed of omega minus omega r with respect to rotor. But rotor itself is rotating with respect to stator, what will be its speed? Rotor itself is rotating at a speed of omega r, so it will be plus omega r. This and this goes, that is omega. That means with respect to stator, it is also rotating at a speed of omega. So therefore, we have two magnetic fields. We have one stator fundamental magnetic field, which is revolving in the air gap at a speed of omega. And we have proved that there is rotor fundamental magnetic field, which is also rotating at a speed of omega in air gap. So therefore stator magnetic field and rotor magnetic field that is psi s and psi r they interact with each other and they produce a very strong electromagnetic torque. So therefore interaction of stator and rotor fundamental magnetic fields interaction of stator and rotor fundamental magnetic fields produces a strong electromagnetic torque given by Te which is proportional to psi s into psi r into sine delta where psi s is the magnitude of stator revolved magnetic field, psi r is the magnitude of rotor revolved magnetic field and delta is the phase angle between stator magnetic field and rotor magnetic field. So electromagnetic torque developed by and that is the fundamental torque Te1 I should call it which is the main torque developed by induction motor because of interaction of fundamental component of stator magnetic field and fundamental component of rotor magnetic field is given by this equation it is proportional to psi s psi r into sine delta and as far as this delta is concerned it's called torque angle okay it is constant now in addition to fundamental components of field which are rotating at omega we have harmonic fields also like stator magnetic field you know fifth harmonic field which is rotating at a speed of minus 5 omega seventh harmonic magnetic field is rotating at a speed of 7 omega eleventh harmonic magnetic field is rotating at a speed of minus 11 omega thirteenth harmonic magnetic field is rotating at a speed of 13 omega and so on on stator side on rotor side also we have 
fundamental magnetic field which is rotating at a speed of omega and the interaction of this is interaction of stator and rotor fundamental magnetic fields results in strong torque which i have whose expression i have written here but in addition to fundamental magnetic field on rotor side also in rotor winding also fifth harmonic voltage or fifth harmonic current is flowing so that will also result in fifth harmonic rotating magnetic field which is rotating at a speed of minus 5 omega seventh harmonic field which is rotating at a speed of 7 omega 11th harmonic field which is rotating at a speed of minus 11 omega 13th harmonic field which is rotating at a speed of 13 omega and so interaction of fundamental components of stator and rotor magnetic field produces the main fundamental torque whose equation is given by this then these stator and rotor harmonic fields can in also interact with each other and they can interact with you know fundamental fluxes also I mean this rotor fifth harmonic field can interact with stator fundamental field or stator fifth harmonic field can interact with rotor fundamental field and so on so therefore they result they will result in torque pulsations or harmonic torque pulsations harmonic torque pulsations interaction of fundamental stator and rotor magnetic field res results in production of main torque which keeps the motor rotating fundamental torque but the interaction of these harmonic magnetic fields results in harmonic torque pulsations although these harmonic torque pulsations or harmonic torques i should call them harmonic torques they are very very weak as compared to fundamental torque they are very small but they will cause torque pulsation so there are harmonic torques which are responsible for torque pulsations so therefore our torque is not a pure uniform torque it has got a ripple also which is called torque ripples so because of harmonic in addition to fundamental torque there will be harmonic torques also because of interaction of these harmonic magnetic fields with each other and with fundamental component of magnetic fields the harmonic torques will cause harmonic pulsations and hence our induction motor torque will not be a uniform constant torque it will have ripples also so it will give rise to torque ripples in induction motor and as far as this delta is concerned delta at different frequencies so for example different frequencies means if stator uh, magnetic field you take omega and rotor its interaction you take with rotor fifth harmonic field this has a frequency of omega this has a frequency of minus 5 omega or interaction of 7 omega and omega different speeds so delta at different frequencies it varies continuously it is not constant whereas in fundamental torque it is constant but here it varies and it has a zero every, over a period a period of time it gives zero average value okay it gives zero average value over a period of time now i will note down here production of pulsating torque what is the cause of these pulsating torques it may be number one because of interaction of stator fundamental flux stator fundamental flux and rotor harmonic currents rotor harmonic currents let me note down first then i will explain second cause may be because of interaction of rotor fundamental current rotor fundamental current and stator harmonic fluxes stator stator harmonic fluxes and third cause may be because of interaction of
harmonic fluxes and harmonic currents. Stator or rotor harmonic fluxes and rotor or stator harmonic currents. First cause is maybe because of interaction of stator fundamental flux and rotor harmonic currents. So stator fundamental flux rotates at a speed of omega. Then stator also produces fifth harmonic flux which rotates in opposite direction at a speed of 5 omega. Then it also results in seventh harmonic revolving field which revolves in the same direction as fundamental field at a speed of 7 omega. Similarly, 11th harmonic magnetic field, 13th harmonic magnetic field and so on. Same is the true with rotor. Rotor also produces fundamental magnetic field which revolves at a speed of omega. Then 5th harmonic magnetic field, 7th harmonic revolved magnetic field, 11th harmonic, 13th harmonic revolved magnetic field and so on. I have written here the first cause of production of pulsating torque maybe because of interaction of stator fundamental flux and rotor harmonic currents. Stator fundamental flux is this. Stator fundamental magnetic field or magnetic flux is rotating at a speed of omega. And on the rotor side, you may take some harmonic currents. For example, you may take fifth harmonic current, you may take seventh harmonic current. Now, fifth harmonic current will result in the production of fifth harmonic magnetic field. Seventh harmonic current will result in the, in the production of seventh harmonic magnetic field. So they, they may interact. This rotor fifth harmonic magnetic field may uh, interact with the stator fundamental flux. Similarly, rotor seventh harmonic magnetic field may inter interact with stator fundamental flux. Similarly, rotor eleventh harmonic magnetic field may interact with stator fundamental flux, and this they will produce strong harmonic torques. Okay, so what type of harmonic torques they will produce? For example, stator magnetic field is rotating at a speed of omega in anticlockwise direction, and rotor magnetic field is rotating at a speed of 5 omega in clockwise direction. What is the relative speed between the two? 6 omega. So, therefore, first harmonic torque will be sixth harmonic torque. We call that T6. So, interaction of stator flux and rotor current, fifth harmonic current will produce 6th harmonic torque. Similarly, interaction of stator flux and rotor, you know, 7th harmonic will again produce 6th harmonic torque because this omega is in anticlockwise direction, 7 omega, 7th harmonic, this is also in anticlockwise direction. So, the relative speed between the two is 6 omega. So, that will result in 6th harmonic torque. Now, interaction of fundamental flux with 11th harmonic flux. Fundamental flux is rotating in counterclockwise direction at a speed of omega. And 11th harmonic flux is rotating in clockwise direction at a speed of 11 omega. Omega, what is the, you know, uh, relative speed between the two? 11 omega plus omega, that is 12 omega. So, that means it will produce a torque ripple, T12. 12th harmonic torque okay then similarly interaction of omega with 13 omega will again produce 12 harmonic torque then interaction of omega with 17th omega omega is in counterclockwise direction 17 omega is in anticlockwise direction what is the relative speed 18 17 plus 1 is 18 so that will result in 18th harmonic torque and so on. So therefore you will see that interaction of fundamental stator flux and harmonic currents or harmonic fluxes in the rotor will result in the development of harmonic torques T6, T12, T18 then it's a multiple of uh, 6, 6, 12, 18, 6, 4 or 24 and so on. So these are the harmonic torques which are produced and these harmonic torques are slightly stronger. And these harmonic torques, when in addition to fundamental torque, they cause a ripple in the torque pulsations. So your torque, net torque is not fundamental torque only, it is fundamental torque plus these harmonic torques 
and it results in torque pulsations or torque ripple okay it's because of first reason second reason i told you maybe because of interaction of rotor fundamental current and stator harmonic fluxes rotor rotor fundamental current will result in rotor fundamental flux and stator harmonic currents will uh, result in the um, stator harmonic fluxes their interaction may also result in you know interaction of omega with 5 omega 7 omega with omega 11 omega with omega they will also they may also produce these harmonic torques same harmonic torques but their magnitude is weak the reason being the road, uh, stator harmonic fluxes are because of stator harmonic currents and stator harmonic currents are very very small because on the stator side you have a very high magnetizing inductance and this magnetizing inductance will limit the magnitude of these harmonic currents to almost zero whereas when you are when you are considering first cause there we had harmonic currents in the rotor in the rotor you don't have any magnetizing inductance you have only rotor leakage inductance ls and that rotor leakage inductance is very small as compared to stator magnetizing inductance and that rotor magnetizing rotor leakage inductance that does not cause zero harmonic currents that still results in the flow of some substantial harmonic currents but on the stator side you know stator harmonic fluxes are because of stator uh, harmonic currents and stator harmonic currents are almost zero because of very large magnetizing inductance on the stator side so therefore very weak harmonic torques are produced by interaction of rotor fundamental current and stator harmonic fluxes third cause i told you maybe because of interaction of stator or rotor harmonic fluxes and stator or rotor harmonic currents like stator fifth harmonic flux may interact with rotor fifth harmonic flux it may interact with seventh harmonic flux it may interact with eleventh harmonic flux similarly rotor fifth harmonic flux may interact with seventh harmonic stator flux eleventh harmonic stator flux they with these harmonic fluxes on stator and rotor they will interact with each other but since these harmonic fluxes are very very small they are negligibly small so they will all result in almost zero harmonic torques okay it is because of interaction of fundamental component of flux which is very strong and harmonic flux is that a torque harmonic torque is produced interaction of harmonic fluxes of stator and rotor side will produce almost zero harmonic torque because these fluxes are negligibly small so therefore out of the three reasons these two i will discard so they, therefore the main reason of production of harmonic torques is because of interaction of stator fundamental flux psi which is rotating at a speed of omega and rotor harmonic currents which produce rotor harmonic fluxes like this and they result in strong harmonic torques like t6 t12 t18 t24 and so on so i hope it is clear to you now how harmonic torques are produced by you know um, interaction of stator uh, magnetic flux and rotor harmonic currents how these harmonic torques are produced so therefore in induction motor when uh, an induction motor is uh, you know excited by a non sinusoidal supply inverter uh, is is supplying in addition to fundamental component of voltage it is supplying harmonic voltages also then these harmonic voltages will result in harmonic currents and harmonic fluxes and then the interaction of stator fundamental flux with rotor harmonic currents or i can i can say interaction of stator fundamental flux with rotor harmonic fluxes cause development of harmonic torques t6 t12 t18 t24 and so on and hence they result in torque pulsations and hence your induction motor torque is not a pure uniform torque it has got some ripple also torque ripple so i hope it is clear to you in this lecture i have try to explain what are the factors which are responsible for torque pulsations or torque ripple in induction motor when an induction motor is fed from you know um, non sinusoidal ac voltage which is, uh, in addition to fundamental voltage supplies you know harmonic component of voltage is also how pulsating torques are produced inshallah in our next lecture we will try to see how to choose how to design pwm techniques for you know elimination of these 
pulsating torques or elimination of or reduction of torque ripples. We will see uh, how different UWM switching sequences affect pulsating torques and they help in reducing the torque pulsations. So I wish all the best to all of you. Please go through this lecture and in case of any queries, get connected to me. Thank you.